I'm really good at forgetting for the whole time. Yeah, to not I've gotten record. close to like I've gotten a few minutes and been like, "You people don't know how many things I've recorded to nobody, <laughs> to a blank camera. I've done it a lot. I've done it a Three, lot. Three, two, one, go. What's up, everybody? My name is Michael Lee Murphy, and you are here on Monday. Uh, watching board game highlight, and it's a great one. I have got a sweet, sweet game, a, a variant of a game called Dulasaur Island. Now, this is based on the very popular Dinosaur Island, which I think was my first uh, board game highlight that I ever did. It's a great game. If you want to learn a little bit more about Dinosaur Island and why I love it, you can check out that video. But now we're going to talk about a two-player exclusive um, version of Dinosaur Island, a game that very much is giving you the feel of Dinosaur Island, of building out that dino park while using different mechanics to uh, give it kind of a new spin and a whole new flavor. This game is super fun. It's got the very bright colors that I personally love so much from Dinosaur Island. Uh, so if you're hoping that, hey man, I hope on this two-player version they tone it down, they super didn't. And I'm pretty sure this is Quan Chi Moria. I think he put himself in the game. Just throwing it out there. Anyway, let's get down to the table to show you uh, a little bit about how... Dulasaur Island gives you the familiar while twisting it up just a little bit with those mechanics. All right, so this is Dulasaur Island. Again, this is a two-player exclusive version of Dinosaur Island uh, that is really fun. So as you can see here, we have just two player boards. Now, these are exactly the same, so I'm going to slide one of these out of the way just so we have a little bit more room, but pretend there's two things there. So we have uh, kind of our phase two board our scoreboard over here showing our excitement level and then our visitors, which are our victory points. And then our personal board, which is gonna show our DNA and our threat level, um, how much our security is and any specialists we might have. So the game is played over kind of four phases, um, similar to Dinosaur Island, but everything is kind of tightened up and shortened here. Um, and a lot of the game is gonna be coming down to playing these awesome uh, multi-use cards or double-sided cards that you're gonna choose how you want to employ them. So there's this big stack of cards up here and all of them are going to have two things. On the top half they're going to have a dinosaur and they're going to have what it's going to take to build that dinosaur and then the bottom half is going to have um, the different park elements you might build out. They're going to have things like merch, they're going to have things uh, like uh, rides and uh, places to eat, things like that. So you're going to decide what to do with your cards, whether or not you want to build dinosaurs to give yourself more of an excitement level, which is kind of an engine building for uh, getting those points. Uh, or do you want more attractions that are going to give you like more cards so you have more options in any one turn, or you might have more money in any one turn, which is going to then help keep up with your security and stuff like that. That is where the game for me really shines. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. So the game is going to come down to um, drawing some cards to start the round, getting your money, and then we're going to go into phase two, which is where the mechanic really departs from Dinosaur Island. So this game is a dice and specialist drafting game, and it's a nice split you choose. So in round two, whoever the first player is that has his little triceratops, they're going to roll out five dice. One, two, three, four. Nailed it. Five dice. And then what they're going to do is they're going to choose where to put these out here in the little dice drafting pool area. Now, something that's really cool is four of the five dice are going to have a PR bonus. They're going to have something that whoever chooses that die is going to get. So if I have this die here, it's going to give me one pink advanced DNA. But then if I were to choose it, I'm also going to get one of the two bonuses listed beneath here. I can either get any advanced DNA that I want or any two basic DNA that I want. Uh, there's other things that will let you to draw cards. There's other ones in here that will allow it to multiply whatever's on the die by two or three. Sometimes they'll give you money. And the one to the right will always give you nothing. So me, if I'm first player, I'm going to choose from the available things second. So I don't necessarily want to give Nick something really good. And if I, if I think he's going to take whatever die, I'm going to make sure that he at least doesn't get a bonus for it. So that's a nice thing that's really fun where you have a lot to kind of think about. And on these dice we have... Basic DNA that are specific, uh, advanced DNA that are specific, wild ones, sometimes they give you money. There's lots of different options. And we have this bag of dice. So you're never using all the dice in any one round. Uh, you're always going to be pulling out five in a round and putting them back in the bag. So it's going to keep that kind of uh, pool of what's available ever changing. 
The other thing that I really like about this is we have specialists in every round. And the specialists in this game um, are going to be, I feel like, more of a presence than in Dinosaur Island. At least for me, when I play Dinosaur Island, I don't use the specialists probably enough. In this game, I feel like they are right there in the middle of all of it. So if I'm the first player, in addition to kind of putting my dice however I want to set them up, I'm going to draw three specialists, decide which two that I want to have available for that round. I'm going to put them right here and right here. The other one's going to go away, and now we're ready to do the drafting phase. So again, if I'm first player, I get to set everything up, but then my opponent gets first pick of what they want to take. They can either take a die, get any bonuses that might may or may not be there, or they can choose one of the specialists to take. And basically, we're going to keep drafting stuff until um, there's only one thing left. And then that's going to represent our additional threat level. So this is going to slide right over here to add threat level and stuff. Specialists can add threat level as well. Uh, sometimes there may be extra, sometimes there may not. And then whenever you get these things, you're going to start sliding up your DNA. So this is the stuff that's all kind of familiar with uh, Dinosaur Island is kind of we need to get our cold stores built up so that we can then turn in that DNA to build dinosaurs. Um, and again, we have these multi-use cards. So you're always going to have three starters, and uh, you're going to choose one to become a dinosaur right away, boom, which is going to get your excitement level going. You're going to choose one to become an attraction right away, and you're going to keep one in your hand. So you always start the game with something. But what's really cool, again, with these attractions is what you choose to make an attraction is going to affect how you make money and stuff like that, because money can be really tight. But you always have a baseline of getting three money around, and for every merch store you have, down here at the bottom of your board, you're going to get an additional coin. And there's no limit to how many of those you can have. We're not limited like Dinosaur Island by a, a grid system for a park. You can just have different things. So I can get more money if I'm really worried about beefing up my security. I want to be able to buy more stuff. Uh, I can kind of take care of that. Another thing you can do is you can make sure you get uh, more of your merch. This is actually the restaurants and stuff like that. Restaurants give you money and merch give you cards. So you're always going to be able to draw a card, but if I have a bunch of merch stores, I can draw additional cards that will give me more options in each turn. Because sometimes maybe I have like way too much of one DNA and I'm like, I'm not, I, I can't use this really. One thing that's cool is if you have excess DNA that you don't really want, you can just turn in any two basic DNA or any one advanced DNA for a dollar and get money that way if you're really hurting and you're like, I'm not going to use this blue DNA. It's bad DNA. It's not even complete it's before like the dna mascot guy came around in jurassic park and fixed it all you know so i'm just going to turn that in for money or you can discard a card drop two basic dna to get one advanced dna or drop one advanced dna to get two basic dna and kind of futz with everything if you're not getting them based on the dice so that's something that i like is there's a little bit more freedom of things you can do with the dna outside of just making those dinosaurs and then the money is going to help you build out those attractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the round. Um, the third phase is that kind of spending your money, spending your DNA to build out, you know, get your dinos built up and stuff like that and adjust your uh, excitement level accordingly. And then we go into the kind of PR phase. So here we're going to look at our excitement level. However much excitement level you have, you're going to go up that many visitors, which is that many points. In a short game, the first one of 25 visitors wins, or rather will trigger the end game. Medium length is 35 and then 45 for a long game. And then we're going to get a PR bonus here at the top. So whoever is the least exciting park, in this case, Yellow Nick, because I'm making this video and I can make myself the winner. Uh, whoever has the least amount of excitement is going to choose one of the two bonuses that's to the left of this little red marker, which will continually slide to the right throughout the game. Um, they can choose the rightmost one, which will be the best bonus. And then if it's my turn second, I have to choose left of where Nick went. Or Nick can just choose this one so that there is nothing to the left of it so that I get kind of hosed and I don't get any bonus at all. But it's a nice little thing to kind of... Just give you a little something to make sure you don't get completely, I think, wiped out of resources and materials. Um, so there's this little PR thing 
And the only other time that the, the kind of PR track is going to come into play is if you're building rides. So again, uh, restaurants and stuff are going to give you money. Merch is going to allow you to draw more cards. And then down here, the little rides section is going to give you a PR bonus from the current round. So basically, whatever this red one is covering, you're going to get that current bonus at the time that you play the card. So that's a nice thing to, you know, if I need to get more DNA, I have an excess of money, let me play uh, the Jeep ride, get that PR bonus, which beefs up my DNA, and I can now play my next dinosaur card. So that's what a lot of the game comes down to, I feel like, is trying to figure out the, the most efficient way to use your resources. Um, you know, much like Dinosaur Island, I think, does that, but it really comes down to the difference of being that you're drafting out these dice every turn and being able to get these kind of cool bonuses which really kind of get you rolling along kind of right away which is really sweet again i mentioned that the specialists in this version of the game feel much more uh kind of in the middle of it all like just they're going to be very useful right away they're always going to be available uh just to draft um, there's no kind of cost that's incurred with them. So they, you know, they come and go. You can hold three, just like in Dinosaur Island. If at any point I get a fourth one, you can choose to swap one out. And they're usually going to uh, affect a certain phase of the game. Like my junior scientist here in phase one, that income phase, um, you can gain a basic DNA of your choice. Sweet. Now maybe that's going to affect what dice I get in phase two because I don't need a certain type of DNA anymore. Or my builder here is going to help in phase three when we're playing those cards, spending that money. Each time you build an attraction of the same type as an attraction already in your park, so maybe I build like a second Jeep ride or something, I'm going to pay one less coin. So there are repeats of the attractions, there are repeats of certain dinosaurs, and there's specialists that are going to help make things easier and cheaper for you or give you certain bonuses. And I just like... I feel like they're a key to the, the kind of success of the game, whereas in Dinosaur Island, I feel like uh, they can be a nice thing once in a while. Here, I'm like, get me my specialist going now. So those are just a few of the things that I really uh, enjoy about Dulasaur Island. Um, I really like the specialists coming up. I like that you know we still have the additional threat of each round, so you might think your security is good enough, but then this die doesn't get taken now. The, the threat is three times higher than what you'd expect it to be. And so you have to kind of scramble to get your security up. Um, and I like how quick this game is. I mentioned the different lengths, 25, 35, and 45. Uh, the first game I played, I was just trying to learn it. We played a short game, and it's really short. Because you might build a few different dinosaurs like these, where all of a sudden I have an excitement rating of 7. If we're only going to 25... It maybe took me three or four rounds to get there, and I've been kind of inching ahead. Now, all of a sudden, I'm only two rounds away from getting over the threshold if I don't ever build another dinosaur. So that's something that's kind of really interesting and exciting. Now, I have to be able to manage that threat and whatnot, because if the threat exceeds my security level, for every space my threat is beyond my security, I lose two visitors. So that might take you down a peg. But the game ramps up quickly. Dinosaur Island isn't a short game, and this one really packs a lot into a short time. And you're just going back and forth because you're limited to two players. It's never going to get to be like you're waiting an hour for your turn because you're kind of doing everything uh, simultaneously or you're just choosing dice and things that don't take a long time. Really, the, the biggest grinding point where it all comes to a halt is when the first player is choosing where to allocate those dice. Me personally, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think that much about it because I just want to keep the game moving. It's like, oh, that's good. That's cool. That's cool. That's a good. And then which specialist to use in each round. That's kind of the slowest point in the game. But then from there, we're just choosing which things to grab. And then uh, phase three, just like in Dinosaur Island, is simultaneously. Like, we can both be working on our park if, you know, just trust that this person's doing things not cheatingly. Uh, and we'll be good to go. And so that's something that's really sweet is this game boogies along. And there's also different little variants. You can solo this game. Um, I'm sure Nick will do You can solo that someday about it. Uh, there's variants to do where instead of the game ending at the end of the current round, if someone gets over the threshold, you can play it where we play one more round before going to end game scoring. Uh, little things like that to kind of freshen up and, and um, add to the game. But it's just kind of a fun little uh, dice drafting engine building game. It really feels like an engine building game with uh, the excitement ramping up and getting these specialists that help you just kind of build uh, DNA and stuff like that. Uh, it just feels like this game where you're just trying to ramp up really quickly to have just a really exciting park. Um, 
And then we go into endgame scoring, which is like pretty simple. So on our dinosaurs next to their excitement, they'll have victory points that they're gonna give you at the end of the game for each of their individual cards. Uh, at the bottom, sometimes you might build a, a big enough attraction that will get you a victory point. And then we'll also have some set collection. So we do have uh, you know, merch and restaurants and rides. And for every complete set of each of the three, you'll get victory points. And that's really pretty much it. So it goes by quick. Does now say it's welcome and gives you the flavor of Dinosaur Island if you don't have time to bust out all of the Dinosaur Island. So anyway, those are some of my thoughts on Dulasaur Island. This is a game that's very new to me. I've only played it a few times, but you know our love for Dinosaur Island, and I really appreciate that they made a two-player version that gives you all the flavor you need but really does also bring you something different. If I had any sticking points for this game, I'd say, and again, I'm new at this game, I'd say it feels a little bit like if someone gets off to a hot start with those dinosaurs and gets that excitement level up, because it is a short game to get to that threshold, it can feel a little bit like a runaway uh, train. And if I'm behind, I feel like I haven't found a good way to catch up. But guess what? That's on me to figure out. I don't feel like it's because it's broken. It's because I'm just like, I don't know how to adjust, you know? And like maybe what I can do is build more uh, merchandise stands to be able to draw more cards each turn, which can then, you know, give me more options where maybe I can luck into being able to play a dinosaur or something like that, make my own luck. Um, that's one thing that I found like in the first game, I was just like, oh man, I'm just, there's nothing I can do at this point. And I kind of shut down. But again, I feel like it's more of a reflection on me and needing to be a little more flexible in the game, not so much the game itself. Anyway, folks, have you played Dulasaur Island? Have you played Dinosaur Island? Give me your thoughts on those games in the comments below. If you're a fan of the original, do you like Dulasaur? Do you like how they've changed it up? Is it a game to your liking? Do you like this more than Dinosaur Island? I've heard some people that prefer this because it is so much less of a bear to set up. It's less long to play. It's easier to get into and explain. So I've heard some people that are saying like, it's I'm kind of just a Dulasaur Island guy now. And that's fantastic. That's what you hope to create a game that kind of rivals the original. For me, Seven Wonders Duel, infinitely better than seven wonders i just i just like the way it plays better you know what i mean it's a whole different experience if you're digging the shirts i know it's not friday but it's coming up here and i can just you know dust it off and rewear this on friday uh if you like our merch go to our Redbubble and check it out if you like what we're doing and want to support us a great way to do that is to tell a friend about what we're doing here we're desperately trying to get to our five thousandth subscriber and we're going to be doing some giveaways at that five thousand so tell a friend and if you have a couple extra bucks and wouldn't mind supporting us you can always check out our patreon uh thanks so much for everyone for joining us speaking of patreon we always put up polls for what board game highlights you'd like to see next and always put suggestions for games you'd like to see appear in those polls in the comments below uh thanks to everyone for hanging out with me on board game highlight checking out some duelist or island have a great day Thank you for watching that video. Just wanted to let you know that we are sponsored by Restoration Games. They make wonderful, wonderful games. And everything we filmed is filmed on top of Game Toppers. Game Toppers is a great way to upgrade your gaming experience. So go to Restoration Games or Game Toppers LLC to find out more. And all that's really, really cool. But you know what's even cooler? This. That's right. I'll show you one more again. Bam. Isn't that cool? Bam. It's cool. That's the right hand. Let's check out the left. Boom. Quack, 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 quack. That's right. The left is only ducks. Quack, quack. I gotta learn other spells with my left hand. Quack, quack. Ducks. Damn it.